We're now going to bring up Ms. Elizabeth Bellevue, the current president of the Student Government Association, who will provide a introduction of the university president. Immediately following her introduction, we will hear the address of the State of the University from President Brenda Allen. Elizabeth? Good afternoon. <laughs> Dr. Brenda A. Allen was named the 14th president of her alma mater, Lincoln University of Pennsylvania, on May 11, 2017, where she now serves as her president. From July 20, 2009 through June 2017, she served as the provost and the vice chancellor for academic affairs at Winston-Salem State University. Dr. Allen was also a tenured member of the faculty there, holding the title of professor in the Department of Psychological Sciences. At Winston-Salem, Dr. Allen's primary responsibility was to, prov was to provide executive level leadership for the institution as it is pursued its academic mission. Dr. Allen was responsible to the chancellor for the overall coordination and effective implementation of the university's academic programs and exercise leadership in promoting quality instruction, research, and university and public service. She had responsibility for developing and administering the academic policies and regulations of the university, and in collaboration with other senior officers, she had led responsibility for the development of the university's annual budget and long-term financial plans. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Brenda a. Allen. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, um, for that introduction. And, and can we give this um, chorus and band just um, orchestra just one more round of applause? Just a, a stellar job, as always. How's everyone? Good? Good. Good afternoon. And we want to welcome you to the 2019 Fall Convocation. As always, we use this occasion to welcome our new students, the class of 2023, and those who have joined us as transfer students. Will all new students please stand so that we can give you a roaring welcome to the Lincoln family. students in the class of 2023 will begin to adorn themselves with those beautiful kente stoles that they have. The stoles are designed to remind students of this institution's deep and rich legacy bound up in the idea that from its founding, Lincoln University has recognized that men and now women of African descent, as well as the diversity of other students who make up the pride, can rise to the rigors of a high quality education. The stoles also symbolize that this is a four-year journey. Take, take full advantage of your time here. Use it wisely, always remembering that our faculty and staff serve as valuable resources towards this goal. I encourage every student to embrace the campus, engage your faculty, connect with your peers, and push yourself to reach for the stars. Opening convocation is also an occasion to install the new Student Government Association members. This year's administration, headed by Elizabeth Bellevue, has coined themselves the Level Up Administration. I found so many definitions of Level Up, I'm scared of some of them. But anyway, <laughs> under Elizabeth's leadership, the SGA vows to raise the conversation among our student body towards affecting change on campus and beyond. I began my partnership with this administration over the summer and look forward to a year of student activism as our campus seeks to lead in conversations about the state of historically black colleges and universities, about federal and state funding, and other important issues affecting higher education in general. Finally, opening convocation is a time to update the campus community on the state of our university. In preparation for this update, I sought the right metaphor to describe where Lincoln is as we start the 2019-2020 academic year. 
My search led me to an article about the symbolism of the lion. In this article, I read that lions are crepuscular. That is, creatures who are most active during twilight hours, during their busy, doing their busiest work at dusk and at dawn. Twilight is a time that is neither here nor there. It is the space that is in between. Symbolically, the space in between represents 100% pure potential. It is a place and time where anything can happen. So at the dawn of the 2019-2020 academic year, Lincoln University places itself in a twilight mindset. That is a state of mind open to all ideas and new opportunities. You see, over the last two years, this institution has been preparing for optimal results. The fruits of this labor are beginning to blossom all across the university. Most significantly, we were reaccredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. Being reaffirmed signals that Lincoln University continues to meet strict and rigorous quality standards, which helps us in maintaining a valid, credible reputation among fellow institutions, students, and the public at large. In addition to being reaffirmed, the Middle States Commission on Higher Education has requested to use the Lincoln University self-study document as a training model. Yes, this is indeed a great honor. As many of you know, this was a two-year process and required collaboration across all offices and all constituencies. I thank the Lincoln community again for your efforts during this important assessment. Recent rankings in the US News and World Report also revealed the growing fruits of our labor. Lincoln University is now ranked in the top 20 of all historically black colleges. Great, right? This is an improvement over our last year's ranking of 27th. Among all ranked HBCUs, Lincoln University is 12th and 11th for retention and graduation rates. Good. And a really nice other statistic is that we rank seventh overall among all historically black colleges for alumni giving. Yay. So that last point is just a, an indicator of how much Lincoln graduates continue to invest in the legacy of this great institution. Other rankings of note are that for the first time, our university is ranked among the top public universities in the northern region. We are landed at number 40, um, having never been ranked before. So again, great accomplishment for us. We are also 41st among northern region institutions for social mobility as measured by US News and World Report. But we don't want to forget that in another social mobility ranking, Lincoln is number one among all four-year institutions in Pennsylvania for moving individuals from the lowest to the highest socioeconomic level. We should give ourselves a hand for that. These rankings are just another sign that our labor is beginning to yield fruit. Upgrades in our credit rating also signals growth for the university. Moody's Investor Services, who rate the credit, credit worthiness of institutions, recently upgraded Lincoln from a stable to a positive outlook. The agency credited our solid operating performance as the reason for the upgrade. This is the second time in two years that the university has experienced upgrades in its credit worthiness, yet another sign of the growing level of confidence expressed by external evaluators. So these are all very good indicators of reputation and functioning here at Lincoln. But we need to really look inside to see what is um, contributing to these, these positive external assessments. 
The work of the university over the last two years has been guided by a strategic vision, which culminated in our current strategic plan entitled, Reimagining the Legacy, Learn, Liberate, Lead. The plan focuses on student success through investments in our roots as a liberal arts institution. The plan has two broad aims. First, to create a distinctive niche in the world of liberal arts institutions. And second, to garner the resources needed to achieve the educational goals. To accomplish these goals, we have concentrated our work in areas known to support the liberal arts and yield the greatest impact on the student experience. These efforts, in turn, ultimately are feeding our upward trajectory in the world of higher education rankings and reputation. Primary are the investments that we are making in the faculty. We cannot offer a world-class education if the faculty do not have the tools, the time, and the support needed to do their jobs. Towards this end, we have been engaging in several activities designed to support the faculty as they do their work. Among the many activities is the curriculum revision process. Faculty members from 18 degree areas have been working to review and revise their majors towards greater coherency, efficiency, and transparency. We will begin phase two of this process in the coming weeks towards a completely revised curriculum for all majors at the close of the 2019-2020 school year. We have also been slowly growing the full-time tenure track faculty. In 2018-2019, the faculty ranks had grown to 97, up from a dip of 99 to 94, seen between 2014 and 2016. I'm happy to announce that 11 faculty searches have been authorized for this academic year. Some of these searches are replacements for retirements or departures. However, at least four will represent new faculty positions and thus net gains for the overall full-time tenure, facu tenure track faculty numbers. So that's great whenever we can grow the faculty. A strong faculty is also one that can bring their scholarly passions to the work that they do in the classroom. For that reason, we have been making investments in faculty scholarship. Through the generous support of the Mellon Foundation, we were able to offer 10 faculty members summer stipends to participate in an institute designed to give them time to pursue their scholarship, as well as to engage with other teacher scholars from other institutions. Even more exciting is that each faculty member was able to hire an undergraduate research assistant, thus creating an opportunity for students to engage the research process at a very deep level. This opportunity will be offered again next summer. I am also pleased to report, though, that through another generous grant, this time the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, we will be able to extend the summer opportunity to more faculty members with an especial focus on faculty members in the STEM areas. But don't worry, folk from the behavioral and social sciences, we will make sure that we put aside the resources so that you too can participate in this project next summer as well. We are also moving forward to support our faculty and programs in the School for Adult and Continuing Education, or SACE as we now call it, which is our facility located at 3020 Market Street in Philadelphia. We have, changed, we have charged the SACE faculty to think innovatively about current programs, as well as to propose new programs towards growing the offerings and operations um, at that location. To support this effort, Dr. Oswell Richards, who is serving as the Associate Dean of the Faculty, has, among other tasks, taken the lead in bringing SACE faculty together around these new ideas. His work with the faculty is being complemented by the work of Dr. Pamela Key, who is Special Assistant to the Provost, who is working to connect the school with external partners that may be able to provide enrollment funnels to the programs or offer other types of opportunities for our students. She has also been asked to propose an administrative structure for SACE that will support enrollment growth as well as to ensure that all of our programs meet the compliance standards um, set by the Department of, of Education where applicable. Investments in the faculty will surely pay dividends towards the success of our students. 
During this time of twilight, we will continue to pursue every opportunity to support the development of the faculty and programs towards creating Lincoln's distinctive niche among her peers. Investments in st and staff, though, are also essential to achieving these goals. Most important is ensuring that we have the right number of staff members across all areas of the university so that we are providing the guidance and services needed to support our students. Towards this end, we have spent time reviewing and, and the organizational structure of the institution and the positions needed to support student success. Over the last two years, several changes have been made. Most significant was the restructuring that brought the area of academic support and student life together under one vice president. Among the many changes has been the appointment of class deans. These deans serve as the first point of contact for students in need of help. In a short year, these deans have become invaluable liaisons for both faculty and students, mostly because students do not have to search around campus for solutions on their own, but have, are able to receive important guidance uh, and advice from their deans. The restructure in this area has also identified greater support for advising and other academic support. Academic support unit, the academic support unit has extended its advising portfolio to include training of all faculty advisors, that is FYE instructors and faculty in the majors, and has been able to erect a new cadre of advisors focused on specific populations of students, such as those in academic trouble, athletes, and veterans. Also important to this new unit is the area of high impact co-curriculars. This area offers support for students seeking opportunities to do research, to study abroad, to perform community service, obtain internships, as well as general career development programming. Finally, bridging student success with the residence halls and the campus experience is deliberately sought through the restructure to restructuring like offering more advising in the residence halls as well as using student activities as a vehicle for further developing essential skills like financial literacy, writing, and speaking. Focus over the last two years has also been placed on upgrading technology and facilities. The strategic plan has a goal of making technology ubiquitous on our campus. This includes upgrades to our systems as well as expanding our technology capabilities. To date, we have been working furiously on increasing bandwidth across the campus so that our use of Wi-Fi is expanded. Much of this work began in the residence. Yay, we need some Wi-Fi. hide under these lights. Um, much of this work began in the residence halls and continues to spread out across campus. We are making more strategic investments in the software used to support academic and administrative work and are in the process of the enormous task of upgrading our entire enterprise management system, which includes infrastructure upgrades to cable lines and other hardware. This is ongoing work that will continue over a long period of time with the goal of catching up to other campuses from a technology standpoint and then leading our peers in the use of technology. Similar to the need for the state-of-the-art technology capabilities, a college campus must also provide a sense of place that projects the emphasis on student success. I can be often overheard saying that every blade of grass on this campus should reflect the time, the care, and the attention we give to the intellectual and social development of our students. For that reason, we are making huge investments in our physical plant. Dickey Hall, which has been closed since 2012, will reopen next fall. Yeah, right? <laughs> Dickey Hall houses several programs in the behavioral sciences, as well as our Department of Information Technology. Ezekwe Nkrumah Hall, one of the oldest structures on this campus, will undergo a historic restoration process beginning in December of this year. The newly renovated building is also due to open in the fall of 2020 as the home of the, of, of the um, Department of Institutional Advancement. Amos Hall, which served as the university's first, first bathhouse, translated first indoor toilet, 
will become will, will begin the process of a historical restoration and new additions sometime in 2020-2021 academic year. Currently, this project is in the late stages of design. Amos will become the home of the Visual Arts Department with a new gallery to house the university's African and African American art collection. Yay for art. Their Memorial Hall, which was the first library, which was not the, which was first a library, and then the primary administration building, is also in the de in the design phase, preparing for a historic restoration and a new addition. The building will, will once again house the office of the president, along with the provost and the finance offices. Finally, early work has also started on the restoration of Crescent Hall, which will once again be primarily a residence hall. Yay. <laughs> so the master planning document is being finalized and will be presented to the campus in early November. Among the many recommendations will be continued investment in the historic core of the campus and a focus on new residence halls. In terms of the latter, we have made some improvements in the residence halls like providing air conditioning and laning. Yay! <laughs> Repairing the roofs on the LLC, the buzzers ate up the roofs and then the water was leaking and people had water damage and so hopefully we won't have that. But today they were up there like it was a gothic uh, movie sitting with their, with their um, feathers out as if they were like statues. So we, we need to keep an eye on that. But anyway, the rules are fixed and so that should help with the, with the leaks. Um, we've also been able to build out the basement of Rinder Hall so that we might offer more beds on campus. Yeah. We, we will continue similar projects next summer as well as focus on general maintenance um, in, in the many residence halls. However, we know that we still have a long way to go. So to address this, we have made it a priority to bring forward a proposal to the Board of Trustees this year for a new residence hall so that we can get the process started this academic year. Yeah, it's all great. So our focus, <laughs> Our focused investment in technology and buildings during this twilight time are ready in Lincoln for a major renaissance of our campus facilities, much like the growth and improvements experienced under the leadership of Dr. Ivy Nelson. It is my hope that by 2025, the Lincoln University landscape will, be, will more boldly reflect the home of a world-class liberal arts program. So none of these investments are being made possible without new sources of revenue to the university. Over the last two years, our state appropriation has seen modest increasing, increases, totaling nearly a, a new half million dollars to our operating budget. Over the two years, also, our appropriations for building projects have been increased by $15 million. Yeah, we are grateful to the Commonwealth for their continued investment in Lincoln University. We now also have a fully staffed Office of Advancement and Alumni Relations. Through their work, we have been able to increase annual giving. We raised unrestricted giving in 2017, 2018 by about a half a million dollars, and we increased alumni contributors by nearly 300 over the 2016, 2017 number. Progress continued last year as we were able to first increase year over year giving by about 15%, two, increase the number of gifts by more than 15%, and three, increase the number of donors by more than 19%. In addition, we have written over 20 grants with seven funded for a total of nearly a million dollars. These new dollars are being used to offer scholarships to students, support student internships and research opportunities, and support faculty development. So can we give the Office of Advancement a round of applause for their hard work? So this is the state of Lincoln University today. 
as we embrace a twilight mindset, making our best efforts during the time of 100% potential, we are seeing great things happen. Our faculty are blossoming with support for teaching and scholarship. Staff are in place to support the student's journey both inside and outside of the classroom. And our physical infrastructure is improving daily. The efforts are being supported by new revenue from the state and generous donations from individuals, corporations, and foundations. The task now is to keep the momentum, to busy ourselves as the lion does during twilight. The possibilities for Lincoln are only limited by our own imaginations. So let's continue to be bold in our imagination and set goals worthy of the great legacy of Lincoln University. Thank you. So that song conjures up my favorite scene from the New Edition movie when um, the New Edition and Johnny Gill there and they are singing that song in the studio. I think that's the best scene in the movie. How many people think that? Yeah. Great job, great job. Okay, so I have now been given the honor to charge the, the to administer the oath of our newly selected Student Government Association. So if you all So I first want to say, an oath, if taken with sincere reverence and internalized in its entirety, maintains the incalculable possibility to enhance a person's overall character and integrity. For at the cornerstone of an oath lies the expectation for a person to A, speak the truth, and B, keep their promises. Previous to today, the leader standing before you adhered to an unwritten oath. He or she stated with unwavering confidence that if elected, they would carry out the, the prescribed platform, their prescribed platform. With that in mind, you, the student body, cast a vote of confidence that these individuals were prepared and qualified to govern during this academic year. So if you will all raise your right hand and repeat after me, I, state your name. I solemnly swear to faithfully execute the office within the Student Government Association to the best of my ability by one, representing the welfare and interests of the student body interests of the student body. <laughs> Two, facilitating communication and dialogue among students. Faculty, staff, administration. And alumni in matters affecting the welfare of the student body. Three, promoting academic excellence in good moral and ethical practices. Four, providing opportunities for the development of superior character and leadership ability among its members. Five, exercising the prerogatives and responsibilities of student government as provided in the Constitution in cooperation with the university administration. Six, giving students an active voice in the governance of Lincoln University 
Okay. Do you accept this obligation without hesitation, mental reservation, or purpose of evasion? Yes. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Lincoln University, I do hereby proclaim and announce you as the 2019-2020 Student Government Association Executive Board Officers. Can we get that? So now it's, um, yes. Oh, I do, do I install the, the Senate or Elizabeth? Okay, do I do the Senate or Elizabeth? You wanna do the Senate with me? Come on, you can install the Senate. I'm gonna let y'all do that. Let's just go like that. Good morning. I have been charged with the task of administrating the oath for our newly elected student senate. An oath, if taken with sincere reverence and internalized in its entirety, maintains the in incalculable possibility to enhance the person's overall character and integrity. For at the cornerstone of an oath lies the expectation for a person to A, speak the truth, and B, keep their promises. Previously today, the leader standing before you adhered to an unwritten oath. He or she stated with unwavering confidence that if elected, they will carry out their, their prescribed platform. With that in mind, you, the student body, cast a vote of confidence that these individuals are prepared and qualified to govern during this academic year. Student senators, please stand up, raise your right hand, and repeat after us. state your name I solemnly swear to faithfully execute the office within the student senate to the best of my you gotta go wait, wait, wait. Is this I, state I state your name solemnly swear to faithfully execute the office within the student senate to the best of my ability representing the welfare and interests of the student body and the university. Facilitating communication and dialogue among students, faculty, staff, administration, and alumni in mattering affecting the welfare of the student body. Promoting academic excellence and good moral and ethical practices. Providing opportunities for the development of superior character and leadership among its members. Exercising the prerogatives and the responsibilities of the Student Senate as provided in the Constitution, as provided in, the Constitution. In, cooperation in cooperation with the university's administration, giving students an active voice, an active voice. In, the in the governance of Lincoln University. Do you accept this obligation without hesitation, mental reservation, or purpose of evasion? Yes. By the power vested in me, I do hereby proclaim and announce you as a 2019-2020 Student Senate. Give yourselves a hand again. Elizabeth? Will you please come to charge the student body? Yes. Ms. Belfield. Yes. Thank you.
Greetings and humble salutations. I am Elizabeth Bellevue, a senior here at our illustrious university, Lincoln University of Pennsylvania. I study strategic communications with a minor in black studies, and I proudly serve as your 2019-2020 Student Government Association President. First and foremost, I would like to shout out the Visionary Class of 2020 graduating seniors. <laughs> to family, friends, and guests, welcome. I would also like to thank the administration of Lincoln University, faculty and staff, the Board of Trustees, and Advisory Council. Thank you for your unwavering support from my executive board thus far. To the student body, thank you for giving the Level Up administration the chance to serve and lead you. The student government will not be here without you. To the student senate, congratulations on today. To my knowledge, you are the first cohort of senators to be inaugurated with the Student Government Association Board. Cherish this moment. To the 2019-2020 SGA, the Level Up Administration, the work that you've done thus far is commendable. To see everything that you all have done come into fruition as the year begins, <laughs> it, keeps, it keeps me going and I am blessed to work with you all. Since the day you were chosen to serve, you have exemplified student leadership in everything that you do. But there is more work to be done as we embark on this new school year. I will begin my charge to you all by posing a question that I would like for you to ponder on. What is one's voice without one's pride? As an administration, one of our themes for the year is student advocacy. Throughout the summer, we have been dedicated to not only being your voice, but also empowering your voice. Lincoln University of Pennsylvania is the premier black institution, which oftentimes is perceived in a negative light. It is important that we as students of this university tells, tell Lincoln's story the right way. We should never forget the grounds of which we walk on. Yes, we have many notable alum, however, it is time for us to walk in their shoes and step into nobility ourselves. It should be our goal to leave an unforgettable legacy on this campus for generations to come. Lincoln, Lincoln Lions, we are all destined for greatness in our own way. One thing that is always said is that your experience at Lincoln University is what you make it. There are many truths to this statement. Because of Lincoln, I am able to stand before you today as a voice and an advocate for change. Although it took me a few years to get to this point, I have learned, I have learned that everything happens when it's meant to be. It is imperative that we appreciate our time here, and we must honor the opportunity to experience a higher education. This past summer, my executive board and I had to hear of various passings of different students at our fellow HBCUs, two of which are near and dear to us, Morgan State University and Bowie State University. The passing, the passing of these students who happen to also be leaders on their campus. I'm sorry. <sighs> Caused many heart heartaches that we're still dealing with today. As your Student Government Association President, my charge to you all is to revive our pride. When we strengthen our pride as students of this university, we can then become a united front and will empower, uh, and, and will empower us to advocate for not only ourselves, but for Lincoln University within any circumstance and situation we face. To the Liberty Class of 2023, you are, <laughs> you are entering an era here at Lincoln University, a new era here at Lincoln University. You will be a part of the change that our university president, Dr. Brenda Allen, has been working very hard to bring. Do not be discouraged by what other people may say about your institution. Do not be discouraged by its flaws, but be encouraged to contribute to the evolution of our beloved orange and blue. You made a great decision on furthering your education here. As a liberal arts college, we learn, liberate, and lead. We learn more and more about the history of our illustrious university. 
We liberate our minds through knowledge and being ourselves, and we lead by not just being the first, but by exemplifying leadership in everything that we do. In conclusion, it is the greatest of honors to serve you all. Lincoln University is leveling up as we speak. As long as we work together to ensure positive growth and progression, we will see the change that we've always sought in our institution. And to the administration, faculty, and students, I look forward to, I look forward to working with you all during this academic year. Thank you and be blessed. Thank you, Elizabeth. The words to revive our, our, our pride certainly serve as a charge and a challenge not only to the student body, but to all of us. Thank you again. Now we're, we will hear the dedication and the conferral of the Liberty Class of 2023 Kente Stoll and an official blessing for the 2019 and the 2020 academic year presented to us by Reverend Dr. Frederick Faison, University Chaplain and Associate Vice President for Student Success, Health, and Wellness. Dr. Faison. Martin Luther King said, we are all tied together in a single garment of destiny. I can never be what I ought to be until you are allowed to be what you ought to be. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are all caught up in this inescapable network of mutuality, tied together in a garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I wanted to share that. That was the reading, Liberty 23, that we shared with your parents as they exited from our campus. And we assured them that you would be in the hands of family. And so today, in this observance of the conferral and dedication of your stole, I'd like to just lift up three things to you. Hope, healing, and help. Hope, healing, and help. First of all, I would like for you to participate with me with the stoles that you've received. I'd like for you, many of you have them over your shoulder, but I'd like for you first to put them on your right arm. So it will be your right and my left. And symbolically, you've witnessed today, if you, if you will stand at this time, Liberty 23. Thank you. The word that I mentioned to you first of all was the word hope help and healing. You've heard today, even with Dr. Allen and her charge to the student government and the charge to the Senate, you heard, will you raise your right hand? Biblically, the right hand symbolizes help. And so this is why we confer symbolically this stole to let you know that we are to be of help to each other. The next word that I would like to say to you, now I asked you to stand, and I'm also going to ask you to do something else momentarily, so stay, stay involved. The next word that we have, aside from help, is hope. We've invited our friends from the Willowdale, uh, Jennersville campus to come and to be a part of us, Brother Larry, and Brother Johnny, if you all would just come on this left. 
These are our friends. Our mission statement says that we empower you to change communities and the world. Well, when you moved in, the community was here. Members of these congregations were here to say to you, and members from Oxford were here to say to you that we are not only a campus, but we are a community. And so that is symbolized in this stole. The symbolism on your right hand for help, the symbolism of hope. The last word that I will say to you today is the symbolism of healing. We are all a part of each other's healing. And what we would like to do now is to ask you to do something that you will do in four years from today. You will be in this same arena. You will turn and you will hood your neighbor. And so as a practice for four years from now, we want you to turn this way. If you would turn this direction. If everyone would turn. And I would ask if members of the Willowdale and also professors would help with those persons who need hooding. Thank you. And so I would add.